Hi guys, Paul here. And those of you that follow our Facebook channel would be aware that we purchased a couple of Tyrannus radios. In particular, the one we have here is the Tyrannus X9D Plus version. So it's the Plus version, which is the latest version that just came out. Now, I wasn't originally going to do a video on this, but um, I had a number of people asking me what my thoughts were, etc., and how we find these new radios. We purchased these, both of these, from Foxtech FPV. I inquired with them that we're going to receive them in a couple of days. So hence, we ordered a couple from them. This is what came in the box. You basically got your charger, you've got your battery that's already in there at the moment, um, your strap, and you've got one of these X8R receivers. And this is supposed to be quite good. The feedback's been really good on these guys. And Foxtech FPV also provided us this adapter, which allows us to then uh, charge this radio via the mains. And that's really, really convenient. So I'm quite happy with that too. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the uh, X9D Plus version. And essentially, as far as the, the difference between this radio and the one previous to this, the running minor changes. First thing is the uh, haptic vibration feedback system, which is just basically a vibrator, no difference to what you have on your uh, mobile phone. And I quite like that feature because uh, you've also got audio on this as in it'll actually talk to you. But um, having the vibration is really, really cool in the sense that if you're close to someone, if you're getting a battery warning or something along those lines, you're going to know it's your radio. So that works really, really well. Also, the other difference between this and the previous model is the LCD, which I'll run through in a minute. And also, I believe the speaker may have been changed because the audio quality out of this is actually quite good. What I'll do is fire this up and show you exactly what I mean by the LCD. Welcome to OpenTX. Throttle warning. Nav lights off. Prop disarmed. Expo off. Okay, so this is the LCD screen. Um, this is the way this one came by default. But we can change that. Now I believe, I'm not sure how good the colors are going to come out on this. So you've got this darker blue, this lighter blue, and then this sort of um, backlit white sort of background. And this is the one I tend to use because it's a lot clearer. Um, but I believe the standard one, the, the original one, looks like this. And that's what it actually looks like there. There you go, so it's that darker blue. So that's basically all the differences between this and the previous model. Now one thing I would like to touch bases on is now when we first received this, it came with a uh, two gig memory card. That's what you can see in there. We had issues with the audio and it seems like a common problem with these ones at the moment um, with the latest version. And I think it's the actual memory card supplied by Tyrannus themselves. And um, you can, if you pop it in and out a couple of times, it sort of clears the problem up. Or what we've done better still is actually replace it with a completely new memory card and that's resolved the issue as far as audio problems. So if you do pick up one of these and you experience audio problems, either reseat the memory card or um, replace it with a complete new one and your problem will be totally gone. That's what we've done. One of the most common questions I've been asked is why do we actually upgrade these radios? Now firstly, Thomas was flying with one of these 9Xs and that's worked really, really well. No major issues with it at all. But I essentially want to get Thomas a different radio and what I was considering getting him was the same radio that I've been using over the last couple of years or so, which is the uh, 9XR. Great radio, it's worked really, really well. Um, very pleased with it. As far as value for money goes, absolutely brilliant. The problem with this radio was it was a little bit too big for Thomas's hands. It's a little bit bigger than the uh, 9X. So hence, I uh, want to get him a, a new radio, a better one. So I decided on the Tyrannus, and the reason I decided on the Tyrannus is we get lots of feedback from different people um, in terms of what they've tried and what motors work well and what ESCs and all that. And one of the most common things I've noticed is the feedback on the Tyrannus has always been really, really positive. So hence, that's the reason we went for the Tyrannus. Now, once we decided to upgrade, I was debating whether to buy the one or the two. Obviously buying two was going to significantly increase the price and buying the latest version was going to increase it again by about $60 or so, I think for two units. So, um, but I decided, look, it's going to be easier if we've both got the same radios and we can set them up in a similar fashion and it's just going to make the whole process a lot, lot less painful. So I thought it was a bit extravagant buying two of these, but having purchased this, I am really, really happy with this. I cannot stress that enough. It's actually blown me away. And you'll find my reaction is, is no different to anyone else that's actually gone to the Tyrannus. 
you listen to people, everyone's heard feedback from others saying how good a radio it is, and then they've gone ahead and purchased it, and they're like, oh my god, this thing's fantastic. So, value for money, this is an absolute killer radio. You can do so much with this. Uh, one of the common questions I get is, how does this compare to the 9X using the ER9X software? Um, as far as programmability goes, I, it's very similar, but I think this is actually easier to program. So um, if you can get your head around uh, using um, the ER9X firmware, this is going to be a breeze that we know issues at all as far as programming this goes. So looking at the top, uh, that's a two-way switch, and it's a momentary one. That's your trainer one. Uh, you've got a... Pro-up disarmed. You've got another switch here, um, which is just a, another two-way switch, but this one will actually stay in position. And um, the rest of these switches are all three-position switches. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six three-position switches. The quality of the build is absolutely fantastic. I've noticed these gimbals are super smooth, and looking, in, looking at them on your flight controller software on a computer, they seem to center really, really well. So the quality and build of this is really, really good in that sense. So one of the things I want to touch bases on and really run through is how we're actually using this radio. And that will probably explain the benefits that I see with this radio. One of the aircraft that I haven't been flying too much lately has been the Zeta FX Phantom. And not having flown it for about three months, I found the first time I flew it with the 9X, I couldn't remember where all my switches were. I knew this was my three position switch for my flight modes as your normal flight mode. Uh, center position was PA mode, pilot assist, and the lower position was my return to home. But I couldn't remember all the other switches. So quite often I'd do a flyby and flick a switch and I'd have my goggles on and I'd ask Thomas, are my nav lights on or not? You know what I mean? Nav lights off. So that's now nav lights off. Nav lights on. So I've got a nice audible um, indicator in terms of whether I'm switching things on or off. Uh, if I've got someone following me, I like to fly near the PA mode or low rates. So that way it forces me to be really smooth on the controls and it makes it easier for them to follow. Expo on. Expo off. So I know straight away with the goggles on what the radio is actually doing. So in that sense, having that sort of... um audio warning on the actual radio or audio indicator is really really helpful okay so what you're looking at now is my cgx 250 now this is the one that's running the nano we uh, board on it and um, a typical multi-rotor setup i've got a free sky two-way telemetry receiver so that's really really cool because my um tyrannus will actually let me know if my rssi is um if i'm losing if i'm going to lose control link it'll let me know what level it's at so that's really, really good. I'm not going to fly out of range inadvertently. But the way I've got this quadcopter set up is I've got a light power alarm that I run on it. And it's a great audible warning that lets me know whether my um, batteries are getting low. I've also got a timer running on the Tyrannus, which will do a countdown for me. That works really well too. But um, that's the way I'm using it with this multi-rotor as is. Now, if I'm flying and I'm safe for argument's sakes, four or five hundred meters out and Thomas is also say around about that distance even hundred meters out once this lipo alarm starts beeping I'm not going to know whether it's mine or his unless I bring one of the quadcopters close and with this last time where I heard the warning I thought it was mine I brought mine all the way in and realized it wasn't mine it was actually Thomas's so that's the way I'm operating this quadcopter and what I want to do is go through and touch bases on the new multi rotor that I've built and how that's set up Okay, so this is my second CGX that I've built, and I've done a video on the power distribution, etc. One of the things that I'm running on this is a D4R2 receiver, and I've done a video on these two, and that's actually running in CPPM mode or PPM mode. So what I can do is actually run this one servo connector straight from this receiver to my flight controller. So three wires, and that's it, I'm good to go. Now, the other thing I've done with this is I'm also, from the data port, I've got two wires going out, my RX and my um, ground wire, which also connects to my NAS32 uh, flight controller. I'm also running power into the flight controller, which is connected directly to my battery, so that allows the NAS to actually monitor uh, voltage of my uh, battery. And what I also have, I don't know how well you're gonna see this, is a little buzzer at the back and that is also connected to the same port so i've got one port running power from the power distribution 
to the flight controller. Second one is running straight directly to my uh, little buzzer. And the third one is connected to my D4R2 receiver. Okay, so I'm going to run through exactly what we can do with this aircraft at the moment. Now, obviously I've got telemetry, which comes back to the radio because I'm using one of these two-way telemetry receivers. And that's going to just happen by default. Um, not a big deal at all. Uh, but the cool thing about this, I can do a lot more with just a minimal wiring that you can see in here. I can actually monitor not only my RSSI, but also my battery voltage, etc. So I'm going to show you exactly the way I've got this set up, and that should hopefully make a little bit more sense to you. So the first position on this switch is just normal flight mode, which is running in rates mode or manual mode or however you want to call it. That's the way I normally fly the aircraft. The second program I've put in there, or the second um, switch for the flight controller, is I've got level mode on. Level mode on. And it'll let me know that I've got level mode on, as you can see. So that, that's really good having that audible warning. The third option I've got is without doing anything extra um, or running uh, voltage alarms or lost model alarms, I've actually set up a lost model alarm on this. Level mode on. So basically what this means is if I crash out or land somewhere and I'm not sure where my quadcopter is, all I've got to do is... And I know exactly where my quadcopter is and I haven't had to do anything else. Now I don't have to worry, worry about running a buzzer or anything like that because my radio will actually warn me uh, as far as voltages go, etc. Um, on the actual, uh, as far as the quadcopter goes. So the beauty of this is, if I'm flying, say, 200 meters out, 300 meters out, or 400 meters out, it'll give me a warning at a certain voltage level to let me know that um, my, volt, my, my voltage is low on my battery, and then I can head back home. Um, and if it gets to a critical level, it'll give me a secondary warning, let, letting me know that I'm at a critical level, and I probably need to get the aircraft down within about 30 to 40 seconds. Now, the other cool thing I can do is if I'm flying and I'm not sure, say I've done half a flight in a battery and I'm back up again flying again and I want to know what my voltages are at on my aircraft. Instead of bringing it in to check it, 11.1 volts, 11.1 volts. So I can just flick that switch and I'll automatically know what voltage level my um, aircraft is at. So essentially the significance is I've got audible voltage warnings on this so it will let me know i've got a countdown timer that runs that will also let me know how the aircraft's going as far as flight times i've got rssi telemetry i can show you that now obviously my rssi is showing uh 97 so you can't really go by that or 98 it's so close um, obviously that's why the signal strength is so high individual cells 3.7 and total cells is 11.1 .1. so even though I can't visually look at this when I'm flying because I've got goggles on, I can still get 11.1 volts. An audible warning as far as what the voltage levels are, and my multi my radio will actually let me know whether I'm running a little bit low on um, battery level, etc. And on top of that, the other advantage is I've also got a lost model alarm now built into my multi rotor, and I don't have to do anything else. So I suppose my point being, this is the way Thomas and myself are using this radio. Um, I love the fact that this multi-rotor has got less wiring than my previous one, but I know so much more about it in terms of what's going on, etc. I mean, just having the convenience of being able to plug in a battery and not worry about your um, lost model alarm or your voltage alarm or anything like that, I don't have to worry about any of that at all using this board in combination with the Tyrannus. That's some of the ways in which Thomas and myself will be using it. I hope that's helpful. I hope that makes a little bit more sense. I know I've been all over the place with this uh, video, but there's just so much I've been learning about this, this radio. And like I said, Thomas and myself are total newbies with this radio, and there's just so much you can do with it. I mean... I've got mine playing music for me. <laughs> so you can, you can program it to do absolutely anything. And, you know, you pop in a 32 gig memory card in there, and you can put a whole heap of music on or whatever you want. You customize, you can customize your own audio. I think there's some videos out there on YouTube that show you how to do that. If someone wants me to show you how I do it, my process, I can do that too. Now you can also make up your own uh, custom, um, I suppose, icons or screenshots for your models. So I've made that CGX one and that works beautifully. So you can, you can, you can just customize this any way you like. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, um, I love the fact when I switch it on. Welcome to OpenTX. It comes up with my logo, which is our BMS web logo. So anyway, that's essentially the way Thomas and myself are using this Tyrannus. 
I hope you found that video useful. If you've got any specific questions about this radio, by all means, um, uh, comment down below. And if I can help you out, I'm more than happy to do so. But look, I'm sure you're going to find the feedback on this radio has been really positive by 99.9% .9 of people out there. So anyway, look, that's our take on the Tyrannus. And it gives you a little bit of idea in terms of how Thomas and myself are using it and some of the advantages in using this type of radio. Like I said, it's programmable to the nth degree. There's, there's not much you can't do with this radio. If you've got any specific questions, please comment down below and I'll try my best to uh, answer them. Anyway, thanks for taking time to watch this video. Hope you found that useful. Catch you later, guys.